My name is Gina Osterlo. I'm an artist and I'm also a professor here at The Ohio State University. I was born in San Antonio, Texas. And then my parents moved to Groveport, Ohio when I was about one. And I lived um, in Groveport and then in Canal Winchester until I was about 17 or 18. And I um, was in Chicago going to undergrad. And then I moved to San Francisco just to be there. And I had a cousin <laughs> who offered me cheap rent. And I stayed in California until last August. I moved a little bit from SF to LA. But uh, yeah, so from 96 to 2017, I was in California. Moving to California is probably the best thing that I've ever done. I encourage everyone to move to California. <laughs> um, the being surrounded, especially in LA, with so much light and the ocean and mountains is definitely something that I recommend for everyone. <laughs> um, I think the, the landscape as well as the people was a huge, uh, wonderful, life-transforming experience to be in a place that's truly multicultural, uh, tr be in a place that's um, truly multilingual. Um, I, I just felt more at, at peace in, in LA because of its connection with uh, the ocean and mountains. Art is a way of life and it's very all-encompassing. I take time to do yoga. I, I practice a Yangar yoga. I also play tennis. Um, I grew up as a tennis player. And I think growing up as an athlete actually really helped me be an artist. Um, being an artist is very physical and it's, it's very demanding. You have to have the type of focus as an artist, right? You have to understand that something might take 20 years to accomplish. Um, and I think that, yeah, being an, a, a lot of, um, it's interesting, you, you'll find that a lot of successful artists are actually athletes because they, they understand the duration of what it, you know, how long something takes to, for something to actually come to fruition. I'm, I'm thinking of how I've had to give up certain things in life to uh, continue a career in the arts. And some of those things, they weren't conscious at the time. Um, and I definitely think you don't have to give up those things, but yeah, having a family was, was not a conscious decision. I wish I had a family, but um, because of the demands of being an artist are so stressful sometimes, you make these decisions to, you know, um, make art instead of, you know, uh, being more attentive to having what it takes to have a family. <laughs> um, being an artist has um, caused me to travel um, and to, to meet new friends and to start other conversations with people who maybe I wouldn't have not have started conversations with that wasn't an artist. So I grew up um, with parents from two different cultures. Um, my mom is from the Philippines, who is Cebu. My dad is fifth generation German American from a farming family. And I think growing up in two different, with two different cultures, I saw the difference, but I also saw how they're not separate. And I saw how this idea of two things being binary is actually false. It's it's too simple and it, it's not actually indicative of like the complexities of who a person can be or who a person is. So being mixed race kind of sets up this um, greater awareness or heightened awareness of interpolation. So when we think of interpolation, I think of this relationship um, of call and response, right? When what is what call and response um, loop and am, am I is a part of, and what call and response relationship can my images set up, right? Um, so uh, growing up biracial in Ohio, it was often a question that was thrown at me, um, and the question was, what are you? It wasn't even, um, where are you from? But it was um, it's a very objectifying phrase of, what are you? And I um, eventually began to respond 
um, with, uh, with silence. <laughs> because no matter what I said, like if I were to say, um, my mom is from the Philippines and my dad is fifth generation German American from a farming family, the viewer was still left with a, with, um, a feeling of, I could see in their eyes, they, were, they still weren't satisfied, it still didn't explain um, their confusion. So I wanted to respond with nothingness. And I think in my work, this really evolved into um, the metaphor of the blank or the void or the, um, the whole um, in, my, in my portraiture work. I often think of um, the connection between uh, an artist's medium and the concepts that they want to communicate. And for me, it was really in photography that I found both a physical and psychological space to address the experience of growing up mixed race in America. So why, why create art and, and why being, be an artist is a very difficult question. <clears throat> on, on one level, um, it's creating a language. And as human beings, we must speak. Right? So in a way, uh, to be an artist, to create language, is to survive. It, it is a um, powerful way to communicate. Being an artist also is testimony that uh, we can create change around us, that we can make something out of nothing. Being an artist also for me directly folds into teaching. And through teaching uh, in the classrooms, the conversations that I have with students, um, those same uh, transformative processes are, are, are discussed and also experienced in, in a group. So how does an artist make something out of nothing? How does an artist um, develop their own language are very key components to, to my teaching as well. Performances for the camera are what compose the majority of my work over the past 10 years. So it's this very careful, uh, precise, uh, relationship between the body and the camera. So I'm thinking of um, other works that I have created as well though that were not photography um, but that, that did start from questions that are inherent to photography. For example, um, I made a 16 millimeter film loop that's presented on a 16 millimeter projector with um, black and white film black and white 16 millimeter film and in this film I am uh, tracing and pressing into my shadow. So I was thinking of the um, tracing of a shadow as being the first form of photography and how it represents our desire to fix the image of another or to fix an image of self and make that image permanent. Um, so it's taking these concepts of photography but expanding them into other mediums. I also did a performance called Prick. So it was uh, really thinking about a few things there, but one of them being Roland Barthes punctum. And I wanted to see what the um, punctum might look like if the body was performing a prick or a puncture mark onto a large uh, field of paper. So it was expanding this eight by 10 um, frame of the photograph into an eight foot by 10 foot uh, frame of paper in physical space and for a performance, I um, had someone else call out the words slice, strike, make an X and prick. And from those um, words being shouted at me, I, re I performed the marks onto paper.
Slice. Strike. Make an X. Prick. 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 Prick.